Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So I do apologize. I have been trying to get this video out to you for almost three weeks. It was supposed to be for my birthday, which was April 19th, but I have had technical difficulties on top of technical difficulties. So I am trying now using my laptop that I just recently got for work um, and I hope it is good enough, the resolution or quality. But anyways, this is going to be a long video because I have 35 frugal living tips for you. Two full pages of tips. As some of them will be repeats and some of them I had hoped would be something fresh and new to share with you. So without further ado, let's get started. The first tip that I have for you guys today are to enjoy free ebooks and audiobooks. You can find these practically anywhere on the internet. You can get them through your library as well. I have been enjoying many audiobooks and ebooks for free through eLibraries Manitoba. That's where I live in Manitoba, Canada and it's like a whole provincial thing so just check it out in your province or if you're in the states your state or whatever country you might be in uh, the library is a great resource or there's tons of audiobooks podcasts that are free all over youtube and just google you know free ebooks free audiobooks and there's tons of different sites just if they ask you for any payment information, I probably would not do that. Um, just try and find the free ones. The only thing that I would trust is the Amazon Kindle, which I did try for one month because you get unlimited ebooks. Uh, and I think there's even audiobooks, but I prefer ebooks, anyways. And I've been enjoying that for an entire month, and then I just canceled it. I read as many books as I possibly could on that one. Um, yeah, so definitely check out that kind of thing if you love to read or listen to something in the background while you're doing something else. Number two, use flour mixed with water instead of cornstarch. This is a lot cheaper, and I just I've started doing this now for the past... I don't know, almost two years now because I had cornstarch and then I ran out and then I was like, oh, what am I going to use? So I started using flour and it does uh, pretty, basically the same thing that cornstarch does in, in mo pretty much every recipe, like gravies, stews, um, just as a thickener agent in most foods. So... Yeah, definitely, if you run out, don't run to the store just to thicken up your stew. But the big thing here is you need to mix it with a little bit of water to so it doesn't uh, cook in clumps before you add it to your whatever it is you're making. Number three, for those of you who like to enjoy some wine occasionally, um, you can make cheap wine, red or white, um, as long as it's no, not bubbly. There should be no, like, it can't be a bubbly wine. This will not work. It'll make it not taste good if it does that. But you put it in a blender or blend it briefly. I don't know how this works, but it just does. You just blend it. It's something to do with the aeration, and it just makes these cheap wines taste a whole lot better. There's other ways you can make them taste better too. I normally just add 7-Up or ginger ale sometimes, but mostly 7-Up or you can make stale red into a nice mulled wine recipe. And that I know is mostly for Christmas, but you can enjoy it year-round. So, yeah, and add some fruits like oranges, lemons, other things to make it taste uh, better. Number four, use yogurt cups, milk cartons, egg cartons, folded newspapers, sour cream containers, old coffee cups, or any kind of takeaway cup. 
etc. as seed starter containers instead of buying them. I have an entire little table full of anything that I had on hand, things that I have saved up knowing that I'm going to be making seedlings. Um, just um, and they did not cost me anything. The only thing that cost was um, some of the seeds because some of them I saved, which is another tip that I have on here. And yeah, I do not go out and buy those little black plastic trays. They are very, um, I don't know, I just don't see any use in buying them. So when you have so many other things that are going into the garbage anyways, why not use that stuff? instead of going out and making more garbage. So, yes, you should be able to do it for very cheap. Number six, save seeds of all kinds from fruits that you have, vegetables, flowers, and re-row yourself rather than buying more. I have done this with peppers, zucchinis, watermelons, beans, um, marigolds, um, those snapdragon flowers, um, oh my goodness, all kinds of different plants, tomatoes, um, even avocados, uh, the list is endless, just try it and see what comes up, there's no harm in just trying and it's quite, quite interesting to see what actually will grow and once you get the hang and you know what will grow and what won't, then you can stick with those ones. But it's, it's definitely not only a frugal way of gardening, but it's a very fun and experimental way to do things as well. Number, I think I skipped number five, but it is, if you do not have cash for something, do not buy it. This is something that got me into trouble for many years when I was younger. I know it just, it seems logical to most, but some of us it did not. And it took me years to really understand the meaning of live within or live below my means. And now I, I totally live by that rule. I never buy anything unless I have the cash in my hand or in the bank to pay for it. I I refuse to go back into debt. So I I do not borrow money for anything that goes for vehicles. The only exception of course would be for a home because most people don't have a few hundred thousand dollars for that lying around. But everything else I I just save and I save and I save until I have the money for it. Number seven, stop buying plants and use clippings to grow your collection. I have a ton of plants that were completely free given to me or I've collected from clippings from the plants that I've had or from going to people's houses and seeing a plant that I really like and just asking if I could take a piece of their plant. And I always ask, I never just take, um, but yeah, definitely start your collection from clippings and just asking people if and if you don't know how to do it it's very easy you just stick it in a cup of water and wait till the roots grow and then you plant it in a nice pot of soil but if you don't know how you could always ask someone who has the plant to maybe start one for you as well number eight use coffee grounds a second time um, you can buy this, I mean, once you've already brewed your fresh pot, add like a tablespoon and mix them up to, and brew a second with the same grinds and the same filter and just brew another, uh, another pot of coffee and then stick that one in the fridge for a cold brew later on. And I find that the second time around it's not as strong as the first time so it's perfect for a cold brew and you add your milk and your flavorings and whatever sweetener it is that you like or if you don't you can leave that out completely and yeah it's, it tastes just like the kind that you buy 
I have bought on clearance for a couple dollars cold brew and then I have tried it this way and they taste like I, I myself could not taste the difference but yes and then you can even go a step further and then reuse those rinds or grounds for making a body scrub by adding an oil of your choice I I normally have coconut oil all the time on hand or almond oil or you can even use like petroleum jelly and just use it as a nice body or foot scrub. Number nine is to use a hair catcher in your drains, especially the bathtub or the shower drain. I have found without one, it just clogs up. I have really long hair. My daughter has long hair. And uh, yeah, it's just gets icky and so I always try to collect as much hair as I can out and then use a hair catcher and as well if you do your hair over the sink don't just wash the hair um, down the drain collect it and throw it away it will save you so much time in the future and um, I guess it will also save you lots of ickiness factor <laughs> Because it is really gross when you pull that hair back through the drain. And yeah, so definitely if you can make one yourself using an old screen or something, go ahead and try that. But just try not letting all that hair go down the drain. Number 10, blow dry ink cartridges. When it, gets, when it says there's no more ink, take it out and blow dry it just for a little bit and then put it back and then you I normally gotten quite a few pages from that and then you know it's actually empty because a lot of the times it's just at the very bottom it's kind of I don't know how it works how it even melts it or makes it work but it, it really really works I have tried it myself and yeah I always do this when it says ink all out I just blow dry it just briefly not too close just and there's instructions on the internet for this. It's how I found this. I was like, I need to get the last of this ink. And so I found a blow drying. And it, it does work. Um, number 11, save your lemon and orange peels. Um, you can use the zest in baking, in cooking, like lemon stir fry or whatever kind. You can use a vegetable peeler and then lay them out on a baking tray and either just let them dry naturally or you can dry them in your oven on the lowest setting and uh, once they are dry you can use them for a tea. I use the lemon peels with honey and you add your boiling water and then sometimes a little bit of ginger you can leave or add that have it however you want you can and then I use the orange peels with a clove or two and that tastes super nice too they actually have a tea to buy that is basically that or you can add the peels to a regular orange peel a cheap tea to give it a nice flavor and then you can save the entire peel um, in your freezer and then when you have a bunch of them put them in a jar Fill with vinegar, and there you go. You have your all-purpose cleaner for the whole house. Number 12, use cold tea bags over eyes for soothing um, treatment and to reduce puffiness. I could definitely go for some of that right now. I normally just save my tea bags in an old milk carton, obviously washed, in the fridge. And sometimes, if it's only been a day, or two and they're still damp I just throw those on my eyes and yes and then I throw them in the compost after that number 13 reuse paper bags for lunches crafts wrapping paper um, and then I also use them in place of paper towels when making any kind of greasy food that goes for bacon homemade french fries um, that's basically the only greasy food that I make but um, yeah, just to collect, instead of using paper towel or wasting your good napkins for something like that, just use uh, an old paper bag that you've gotten with takeout food or uh, groceries 
we actually don't you have paper with our groceries here but I know some places do but anywhere you get an old paper bag save it and reuse it number 14 drink water more often I cannot express how important this is and how big a life-changing things that drinking more water can do for you it makes your skin healthier it takes away headaches it um, evens out your weight it helps your digestion and I can go on and on but those are the main ones that for me have helped number 15 Reuse an old screen. I saw this on Fairyland Cottage. She used an old screen and made new paper using old scraps of paper, and it was so cool. I personally have not done this, but I would really like to do that once I get my hands on an old screen. But yeah, you can make your own paper and use it for cards or invitations or whatever you like to do. Uh, with the new paper because it is kind of a thicker stiffer paper and I just think that's a really cool idea number 16 use old newspapers to clean windows and mirrors um, I also use them to stuff my shoes um, boots and purses when they are in storage to keep their their shape because sometimes if you put a purse in a some thing it gets squashed and it completely gets misshapen and I have even used it in um, hats like I have a beach hat and then it's straw and it got smushed and completely misshapen so to keep it shape I just shove it full of old newspaper and this really does work and of course you can use uh, the paper to start fires and as wrapping paper as well almost well we are halfway there number 17 buy leftover scraps from the local butcher for literally next to nothing this is something I just found out recently but our butcher here in town you can buy like a huge box of leftover um, beef with some of the chunks have a lot of meat on them uh, for five dollars five dollars you can make soups you can make broths you can take all the meat off and put it in a stir fry like make a lot a lot of broth and stock from them like it is such a good deal and yeah number 18 reuse an old razor to get rid of pilling on clothes to make them look new again I have this really old sweater and when I say really old I mean over 10 years old and no word of a lie I just used a razor it was people kept telling me to get rid of this sweater because it was a black sweater and it had all that you know ugly white and gray pilling on it and I just I could not get rid of it it's one of my favorite sweaters it looks good all the time well except for the pilling so all I did is I took an old razor and I went over it it took forever to do the whole sweater but once I was done it looked like a brand new sweater <clears throat> number two, 19 <laughs> number 19 reuse sheet masks by storing them in a steel bag in the fridge I personally do not buy these but I was given a whole bunch for my birthday after Christmas and so I just I put I used one of them once and I was like how wasteful is this to just and it still had a whole bunch of the product that was on the actual mask and so the second time I did it I just took it off and I folded it nicely and so I could unfold it again and I just reused it I just I can't stand throwing things away until I know that I've gotten the full use out of them so yeah and it's if your face is clean then why why not use it one more time after that number 20 if you're doing any kind of home renovation or any kind of DIY at home ask the home renovation stores especially if they're local or whatever if they have any used product that has been returned sometimes they sell at really cheap or I have even gotten 
this stuff for free if you're really nice and just you know ask and you would be surprised like they're just gonna throw this stuff away anyway because they cannot sell it on the shelf anymore so it's definitely good to ask and if the worst they can do is say no you're right back where you started anyways number 21 use cabbage instead of lettuce or salad because and have coleslaw not only does it last way longer than any salad but you can use it for all kinds of other dishes super versatile super delicious you can use any kind of your dressing or you can make a coleslaw dressing and they even sell coleslaw dressing but it's super easy to make just use your miracle whip a little bit of sugar and lemon and there you go. sometimes we add a tiny bit of mustard but you don't have to do that number 22 is use old clothes to make new clothes or there are tons of other ways you can use old clothes you can make them into rags you can make them into doll clothes you can make them into oven mitts or um, those things that you put a hot pot on pot holders or whatever like the list goes on and on but before you throw anything in the garbage or get rid of it especially if it is no longer like it's got holes or it's completely worn see if you can use it for something else number 23 ask and or let people know that you know what you need and are looking for because they might have it themselves that they no longer need or they might have extra or they might know someone somewhere that has it and that they are either giving it away or selling it for a cheap price and sometimes often because you are someone that they know they might actually just give it to you or just ask for a very small price so I have always tried to let people oh yeah I'm looking one time I was looking for peppercorns and my mom had a whole bunch of extra because she doesn't use them anymore but she had them from years ago and of course they're still good and I have gotten countless things like this I've gotten beds the list goes on and on but definitely always let people know what you need and what something that you're trying to look for in your home and number 24 I said before you click buy, but it can be before you buy also if you're in the physical store, which is kind of hard to do nowadays, but before you buy anything, see if there is a DIY version or if you can find it for either cheaper elsewhere or for free, like I said, by asking somebody else, or if you can just plain maybe just live without this item and see if you can go you know a month or two and if by then you've already forgotten about it and you don't need it then you really didn't need it in the first place number 25 we're almost done now obviously right now we can't do this because all the schools here are um, completely closed down but before this whole COVID-19 came about uh, the high school the local high school in my town they do um, like hairstyles, all kinds of uh, salon treatments like nails, pedicures, facials, eyebrow tinting, everything for like five to twenty dollars, and hair, like it, it was crazy. And I know uh, in a lot of places, high schools, it's even cheaper th than when going to the professional colleges because I know they have it cheaper than the professionals, but the high schools are even cheaper in the colleges so check out your local high schools again once the world comes back to a somewhat normal they have great deals on hair and other services that you normally would pay a whole lot more and they actually are it does take a little bit longer because they are learning and they are being like watched like a hawk to make sure that uh, what they're doing is correct and I'm, I've never had an issue it always turns out it just takes about twice as long as a professional that's all number 26 listen to the radio it is free and if you don't have an actual radio like I do not 
although I have one in my car, which I listen to all the time, I use my internet, my computer. I just go to whatever station that I want to listen to and put it on live radio. And there you go, you got free music. You don't even have to um, go and try and make a playlist. Just pick your favorite music station, and there you go. And oh, yeah, so. Yeah, and you can also use, they have most radio stations have phone apps, but I really don't like downloading apps as well, so I, again, I just go by my, by my computer, but yeah, stop buying music, it don't need to, you don't need to buy them, so, or you can make playlists on YouTube, which is another thing that I like to do as well. Number 27, use flat sheets for curtains, need I say more? My mom has done this with a lot, like almost all her curtains are made from some kind of sheet or something. Number 28, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, use a towel instead of buying a dish rack. For years, my entire childhood, we did not have a dish rack. I did not even know what a dish rack was. We just had a towel. And then at some point she got like this tiny little bucket and she just put a towel in there and then that was our dish rack. But yeah, we've never had a dish rack. But now my mom is older, has more money and she's fancier now so now she has a dish rack. And I was given one but I actually got rid of my dish rack because I prefer just to have a towel and once all the dishes are done I fold it away and then my counter is clear. So yeah, definitely you don't need a dish rack. Number 29, buy office supplies secondhand. Oh my gosh, when I first discovered this, that you could do this, I was in heaven because I go through a lot of office supplies. I found a ginormous bag of staples for 25 cents at my local thrift store. 25 cents. <laughs> um, and then I found like a whole bunch of file folders for a dollar. A dollar. And they are selling them for 10 to $25 in staples and stuff like that. But yeah, you can get pens, you can get all kinds of office supplies, um, even like scissors and paper punchers, staplers, and you can get them from thrift stores or any online like Virage, Sale, Kijiji, yada yada, whatever you have around. Number 30, Again, for office, reuse all everything that you can. Reuse those file folders. Reuse those paper clips. Reuse those push pins. Reuse your paper. Like my uh, printer only prints on one side, so if I'm only if I'm not having to give those papers to a client, I just flip the pages and then I print it on the other side as well. And then I just kind of X through the the other side when I, so I know which side I'm supposed to be looking on but yeah reuse everything number 31 and this is kind of a weird tip but it does work if you've ever had pencil crayons and they constantly are breaking every time you try sharpening them this is because at some point they've been dropped and all the the lead or not lead but the the pencil crayon inside is all broken up so it's going to keep breaking while you are sharpening because it's already broken. So you stick it in the oven. Lowest setting, I can't remember exactly what time for how long, but it's not very long, a few minutes. It heats it up and it melts it and molds it all back together. Just do not over bake them because then they will turn into a sloppy mess. Just a little bit enough to kind of get it soft and molded again and then once it gets hard it is like a brand new pencil i did this with my daughters and it works it truly works number 32 stop buying pens and use up all the ones that you have i used to love buying pens because there are such awesome pens out there but then i am stuck with all these cheap pens that either you know, I bought at one point or I've gotten from all kinds of businesses, but literally <laughs> there's no reason to buy pens. So I haven't bought pens in years now. 
Number 33, stop buying notebooks. Use loose leaf paper or again the backs of already used paper, scrap paper, and put it in a binder that you have lying around or an old duotang. Most of us have way more binders and duotangs than we know what to do with. So use that instead of buying those expensive, even if they're from the dollar store. And they don't always get used up and they end up in the garbage anyway. Just use what you have. Number 34, almost over. Reuse your candle wax at the end of the candle. I never throw it away. I have it all saved up. Make your new candles with it. You can make wax melts with it. You can make fire starters. Um, yeah, just use that wax up. Number 35, use natural ways to freshen up your home instead of always using candles. I love candles. I think they are very nice to have around, but they, they do get expensive. So I open my windows when it's really nice outside, and I love the smell of fresh air. I use essential oils. I use um, those incense sticks. I mean, they're not natural per se, but they are... They say they're natural on there, and they are a lot cheaper. Like, I get a, a box for a dollar or two. And then also, you can just boil some spices on your stove top. Throw in a pot of water, do some dried peels. You can do some cinnamon, some cloves, um, whatever. Uh, cinnamon, well, I said cinnamon sticks, but, or cinnamon, but I use the cinnamon sticks. You could use loose uh, cinnamon, but yeah, just throw it and it smells so good. Apples, make that apple yummy flavor, or just bake some cookies and there you go. Get that fresh baked smell. So that's my last tip, but I do have a bonus one. But this is just to say anytime you st feel like spending money, go online and look up Frugal Living Tips or watch some frugal living videos and get some inspiration and get away from that spending money mentality. I know that this has helped me a lot every time I feel like spending money because I am a recovering spendaholic still after all these years. I still every so often get that itch. It's like, well, I have all the, like, why can't I just spend it? <laughs> Um, but yeah, then I just go online and I, I get inspiration from other people and I, and then I remember why I'm doing this in the first place so that, you know, I can provide for my, my daughter and I don't have to worry about money if my car breaks down, which it did. And I had the money to fix it. I didn't have to worry like I did before. Like I, in such freedom knowing that you have money to do things that you love and spend time with the people that you love instead of always working to support just plain living when you can live I don't know it's just it's just awesome to not spend every dollar that you make so yes read blogs read books read ebooks listening to audiobooks and check out your library and watch all my other frugal living tips anyways i really hope you enjoyed this video it was a very long video almost 35 minutes which is 35 tips um yes so i hope you enjoyed it and i am just so thankful for each and every one of you i hope you all are staying healthy and safe I love you. Thank you so much for being here. And I will try to do a tour of my house next because I know that was a highly requested video. So until the next time, as always, I hope you have a lovely and frugabulous day, everyone. Bye.